Thank you for joining us for the last uh, jQuery 1.4 hotness episode. This is the oh my god what could break episode where we cover all the uh, backwards incompatibilities that exist uh, in jQuery 1.4. Nothing too bad, but let's just review them in detail. <coughs> um, before I get into it, I want to point out that um, coming out with jQuery 1.4 is a compatibility plugin for 1.3. So all of the things that I'm about to discuss are addressed in this plugin. So uh, if you want the easy way out, just drop in that plugin and you should have smooth sailing. Uh, but let's, let's dig into this. The first is that add, which now accepts a context, as we've discovered earlier. Add returns elements in document order. It didn't before. So, so if you say uh, you want to grab all foos, and then you're going to add on bars, and then you want to get the first element. Let's say that there actually were foos. In 1.3, you would be guaranteed that you would get a foo because the bars are like appended on to that set. But um, now, add will always return in the document order, so that is, um, that is what you can expect now. Uh, clone, uh, passing the Boolean true to clone, will not only copy events, but also data. So if you've stored custom data onto elements, um, clone true will copy that data. Um, I definitely consider this a feature, but if, if you didn't operate under that assumption before, uh, you might want to get a check for that. So, so for instance, if I got this element, I add some data, say what? Oh yeah, I clone it. I throw that new clone somewhere else, and I grab out, say what? Oh yeah, that's what we get. Um, and then also data when you when you when you call uh, jQuery data elem or you call let me make that a little bit more visible uh, jQuery elem data they're equivalent. <clears throat> it doesn't return that ID the, the the internal ID that was used. Um, instead, it returns the document the the entire object cache that has been stored into there. Um, so previously we'd have this number, something like that, and now it just returns the entire object. Uh, one change, this, this might catch some people. Um, so let your friends know, calling jQuery without giving it um, a parameter, it used to default to document. So so we would see a lot of code like this, where someone says um, dollar bind, um, and they're going to bind to like a custom event, maybe. Um, we saw that a lot. <clears throat> this used to kind of work, pretend it was that. Um, it no longer does that. And, um, and so definitely make sure that you're actually passing a real element when you're using bind and trigger. Uh, currently, I will point out that ready this does work in 1.4. We made a special exception just because this is very common. But if you're doing this, please stop. Please use document ready or one of the many other shorthand ways to execute functionality on, on document ready. Uh, this was a tricky one. So um, let's say that you have a select, a drop down box. And inside that drop down, you have um, two options. And the value of the first is one, but the text inside it is two. Um, and then the value of the second one is two, but the text inside it is one. What happened is that uh, before jQuery actually looked at kind of both, and it would it could select uh, when you're setting the value, like you want you want the select to have the value of one, it would use the value here, and then you say I want the select value of value of two it would use the two that's in the text. Um, that's probably not what most people want, but I have seen people that actually consider that expected behavior. So that's changed in 1.4. It will now always select on the value only and never on the actual the name. There were some changes into uh, the jQuery browser. Um, one addition is that there's now a jQuery browser.webkit um, this is exactly equivalent to uh, jQuery.browser.safari. Uh, so uh, it works the same way. Um, 
It's just called WebKit because now we have Chrome, and Chrome is more popular than, than Safari, so it makes sense to kind of be a little bit more general here. Mozilla is still Firefox, and, and the Gecko um, clones, uh, Camino, would be included here. <coughs> MSIE and Opera say the same. Uh, the difference is that browser.version um, will return for WebKit, it returns the WebKit version, uh, which is something like 500 and 0.2 point something. For uh, Gecko and Mozilla, it returns the Gecko version, which is like 1.9.1, 1.9.2. For IE, it's going to return IE 6, 7, 8, pretty expected. And then Opera, it'll return Opera 9.67, Opera 10, Opera 10.50. So that's the the behavior that you can expect um, out of browser version now. (coughs) Param serialization has changed the default way that, that deep objects are serialized is a little different now. So uh, in 1.3, I covered this in, in an earlier episode, 1.3 um, and before, if you had a, an array inside of the object that you were serializing, it would come out looking something like this. And in 1.4, it matches the, the ways that PHP and, and Rails, for instance, expect this to come in. Um, you can change this back to the original behavior if you want what's in 1.3. Just do jQuery ajax settings traditional equals true and it'll revert back to to what you had. So no hard feelings, please. jQuery.extend no longer extends non-plane objects or arrays. Good to know. Let me give you an example. We're going to start out with this function. Okay. Now we're going to create a new object called extend and what's inside of that object is a reference to this function. Now we're going to extend this object here with a new object, foobar. Previously in 1.3, what extendy would equal is foobar, hello, and then this object. It was basically trying to extract the properties from the function, which is an object, and it just generally is uh, was a little wonky. So what we have now in 1.4 uh, is a little bit more in line with what you would expect. It actually maintains a reference to the original object, uh, in this case, to the original function. So hello will be equal to a reference to uh, this guy up here. So that should be more in line with with what people expect, but it is a break with how this was treated. Uh, Deep extends uh, were treated with 1.3 and before. Um, This was also covered before, which is, um, if, uh, if, let's see, for response headers, if no data, if you don't set a data type and the content type comes back as something like application JSON, it will be parsed as JSON, so the content type is basically obeyed. Um, but if you set a da- data type, it, um, jQuery will honor that data type for sure. This is only in the cases that you leave out the data type. Um, <coughs> and same thing with actually making an AJAX request in the request header. Um, the actual content type that you're looking for will be sent, which allows the server to respond. So like, let's say you want JSON one time and XML the next time, the server can pick up on the content type that you're, that you're requesting and serve that to you. <coughs> um, also in AJAX, the if modified property that's existed, um, it basically looks at the last modified um, uh, response tag, response uh, header, and uh, it determines if it's been modified. And the, the normal behavior of jQuery is to basically ignore it and get it anyways. Um, but if you set it to true, it'll honor that. The, the change now that in 1.4 is that in addition to looking at the last modified property, it will also look at the e tags um, and see if we have a match on e tags. And if we do, then we're just going to leave it alone and not actually request the, wet, the rest of that um, response. <coughs> JSON is now um, interpreted using the native JSON parsing if it's available. And if it's not, it's going to provide an extra check for validity. Um, so there's a lot more strictness around uh, how well formed your JSON is. Um, if you return, if, if you send back JSON that looks like this right here, you can't use functions in JSON. That's not legal. You can't have unquoted keys. All your keys have to have double quotes around them. Um, 
So one thing that I do want to point out, jasonlint.com, J-S-O-N-L-I-N-T.com, uh, is a way where you can check to see and make sure that uh, your JSON is absolutely correct. I'll also look at the JSON spec. It's really not that long at all. <coughs> I want to point out that, again, um, all, of, all of these um, aspects are covered in the compatibility plugin that is available. So if you have any of these um, issues and you want them solved quickly, you can drop in that plugin and miraculously you will be saved. I want to thank you for joining us for not only uh, the jQuery 1.4 release explosion of fun, but also for the jQuery 1.4 hotness series. Um, there's a lot more at jQuery1.4.com. Please check out the rest of the videos and content that we have up there. Some really great stuff. I want to point out that I also have um, a podcast with some of my friends where we talk about things like this in a fun manner like this. Yayquery.com. Have a great time. So uh, thank you again. And um, I'm interested to see what you guys start making with jQuery 1.4. So thanks.